Hi, and welcome to the Tibetan Language Institute, Introduction to Tibetan. This is a video course based on our book, Introduction to Tibetan Language, Level 1. I'm going to start with a presentation of the 30 consonants, the alphabet. The Tibetan alphabet is always taught in a manner like this, with the, with the 30 consonants laid out in eight rows and four columns. The reason for this is that Tibetan, similar to Sanskrit, has groups of sounds that are quite similar, that share characteristics in common. Here, the first row, which we can call the ka row, all the sounds are made in the throat. In the second row, all the sounds are made at the roof of the mouth. And the third, all the sounds are made at the teeth, with the tip of the tongue against the back of the teeth. The fourth, the sounds are made with the lips. And the first three letters of the fifth row, the sounds are made again at the roof of the mouth. When we look at the alphabet, we notice um, a series of dots in between the letters, and then at the end of the line, a vertical stroke. These are the two, the only two punctuation marks in Tibetan. The dots separate syllables, and the strokes separate lines. The dots are called tseik, and the lines are called she. If a line ends in this letter here, na, it has both a seik and a she. So the first row, then, is made up of four letters. So we could talk about the four different qualities that the four letters, depending on which column they are in, have. The first column, down to the dividing line here, all the sounds are short and high. In the second column, the sounds are medium in length, a high tone, and breathy. When we talk about tones in Tibetan, or high and low, we just mean that some sounds have a rising tone and some a falling tone. So, uh, um, for instance, um, this is ka and this is ga. So short and high, ka. Medium, high and breathy, ka. Long and low, ga. The fourth column here, the fourth letter in the first row is na. It's long and low and nasal, na. So the whole first row then would be ka, ka, ga, na. The first two are high, the second two are low in tone. That's true for all the letters down to the dividing line. <clears throat> the second row, um, the cha row, the sounds have those same qualities as to high or low. They're made however, at the roof of the mouth. So the first one is cha, the second cha, the third ja, and the fourth nya. The fourth letter in the second row is like the Spanish nya in manana. The third row, the sounds are all made at the teeth, so with the tip of the tongue at the back of the teeth. So the first, first one is short and high, so ta. The second one is medium in length, breathy and high, so ta. The fourth one is long and low, da. The third one, rather, is long and low, da. The fourth one is long and low and nasal, na. So when we talk about nasal sounds, there's some vibration that happens in the nasal passages when we make those sounds. Um, the fourth row, the sounds are all made at the lips, so we have Pa, pa, ba, ma. The fifth row, the first three sounds are, the letters, first of all, are in appearance very like the first three letters in the second row, with the exception that these have a small flag, you could say, on them. Um, these sounds are also made at the roof of the mouth. So we have tsa, tsa, za. And then the fourth, we've crossed over the, the uh, demarcation line there, the red line. The fourth sound in the fifth row is made at the lips, wa. Now, if you're following along in the book, Introduction to Tibetan Level 1, it would be good to look at page 3 at this point. So I'll recite once through 
the, f the first 20 letters, the, the first uh, letters, the, the letters in the first five rows. <clears throat> so we have ka, ka, ga, na. Then the second row, the sounds are all made at the roof of the mouth. So we have cha, cha, ja, nya. In the third row, ta, ta, da, na. In the fourth row, pa, pa, ba, ma. And then in the fifth row, sa, sa, za, wa. Now with the sixth row, all of these characteristics, all these qualities of short and high and breathy, etc., that we talked about in the first 19 letters, the first 19 consonants, those qualities are no longer relevant. We have a new set of characteristics for the sounds below the dividing line. In the sixth row, all the sounds are a low tone or a falling tone. So we have ja, za, a, ya. And in the seventh row, the first two sounds are level in tone, so just quite like English, ra, la. But the second two, the third and the fourth letters in the seventh row are high tones, so sha, sa. And in the eighth, they're high tones also, ha, a. So the sixth, seventh, and eighth rows would be ja, za, a, ya. Ra, la, sha, sa, ha, a. So Tibetan is read left to right and top to bottom, just like English. So it's very good to memorize the alphabet, ka through a, the 30 consonants. Each of the 30 consonants, you may have noticed, has the vowel sound a within, within it. We call it the inherent a, uh, or the inherent vowel sound. The last letter of the alphabet is a high-toned a, uh, and the third letter in the sixth row is a low-toned a. Uh. The high-toned a uh, is regarded as the universal sound, the mother of all sound, the perfection of wisdom in one sound, and that is, that is the a uh, that's found in all of the 30 consonants. It's also present in Thank mm -hmm. you.